scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It is important that we study scripture because the Bible represents the boundary of God's commitment to man. God is not committed to man outside of the provisions allocated and allowed by scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture the bible says which is able to make thee wise unto salvation and so the knowledge of the scripture exposes us to god's methodologies we're able to understand his way of doing things and when we sustain the grace to engage accordingly then our lives become a reflection of what he has said Many years ago, I had a vision, and in that vision, I saw a great door. It was a very big door. God was opening me up to a thorough understanding of the value of the Word of God. I saw an ancient door, and the Spirit of the Lord took me close to that door, and then I found out that that door was made up of other smaller doors. And I noticed in that vision, the doors were opening and closing, opening and closing. And each time the door opened, light will come out of it. And then it will close, open again and light would come out of it. And I noticed on every door, a scripture was written. And then the Holy Spirit began to let me know that those doors represented revelations and different dimensions of God captured. Remember, Jesus said, I am the door. And so every dimension of spiritual reality that you lay hold of, the light that comes is the grace that empowers you to walk in the reality of that scripture. That means whatever you propose to know, if you do not have the grace to demonstrate its validity, it is not yet life to you. It says they are life not to those that seek them, those that find them. Are we blessed? Praise the Lord. All over the world, believers seek to walk in victory. When you ask the average believer, he will tell you that he wants a consolation to his Christian experience. And while it is true that we do not serve the Lord and we do not seek him because of things, in God's economy, he so designed that somewhere along the line as you walk with him, you get to a point where your life begins to bear fruit. Are we together? John 15 and verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So he desires that somewhere in our Christian experience, we begin to produce results that become an evidence to unbelievers that we are serving a living God as well as become consolations to us. But then results in this kingdom of all sorts, they do not just come because we desire them. They come when we have access to the requisite level of spiritual illumination. Jesus wept over Jerusalem, the Bible says. He lamented and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you have known even in this your day the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hid from you. So there are things that pertain unto our peace. There are things that pertain unto our growth. 
there are things that pertain unto our efficiency. And I'm trusting that God is going to grant grace as we explore a few keys along the theme of this conference. I read carefully through the letter that um, was written and given to me from the ministry, and I could discern the passion of this church for revival, for the move of God, to see that the purposes of God are birthed in a territory like this. And by the grace of God and with all humility, I am a student of revival. I have studied the moves of God across almost every continent. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these people and I've heard firsthand from them what God did in their days because it is a desire that we become a continuation. Are we together now? A continuation so that it will no longer be fables that we were told but we will be able to prove the validity of God to a generation. Otherwise, there will come another generation that knew not Pharaoh. And they will now begin to detest the things that we cherish and hold as sacred. There must be a dimension of spiritual reality that must be preserved. Otherwise, a whole generation will come and detest God. God will become like a historic material. We will just know that once upon a time, there were people in Enugu who were passionate about God. Once, you see, let me tell you this. The way the devil destroys a generation is not to cause a catastrophe in one day or one year. The way the devil destroys a generation is to study its system of continuity. Please understand this. When the devil finds out that the fathers are so covenanted to God, they will not backslide. He will give up on the fathers. But he will make sure the bridge that translates that knowledge and that passion from the fathers to the children is caught. Respectfully speaking, this is what has destroyed the West, the American nations and all of that. Their grandmothers and their grandfathers, those we call God's generals, while they were there in the field doing the things they were doing, the devil distracted them with the here and now, and they did not think of a system of continuity. Are we together? So Satan gave up on the parents and went to grow with the children. Now the children are the presidents, they are the governors, and they are very vocal and unashamed about their desire for the absence of God in their community. It is not enough that we know God. We must study the system allocated for the transference of these things. In ancient times, you would see that the Lord would instruct the fathers. He said, write it on tablets. When your children ask you, why are you doing this? Tell them. Once upon a time, something happened like this. Hallelujah. In every generation, God seems to find a few people. Now, I don't know why it is a few people, but I may be able to attempt tonight why it seems like only very few people are able to qualify to host certain superior dimensions of the grace, the power, the glory, the wisdom of God within the context of a generation. So it looks like you have people just being average in their work with God, churchgoers here and there, loving God, serving, and then every once in a while you will find men and women who press exceptionally into the things of God. And as a result of that encounter, they come up with anointings and graces and very, very striking dimensions of God. And those individuals become the, the signposts. They become representations of God's desire within that dispensation. And then when those people leave, usually people go down again and then they wait and one day, a Catherine Kuhlman will come up. Then one day, a Smith Wigglesworth will come up. And then one day, so on and so forth. Even in the history of this nation, and I believe the history of this city, when you study from a spiritual standpoint, you will find out that scattered across your history were moments when certain individuals came with fire and power and they commanded dimensions of revival and fire, there was such an awakening within that territory. And it is my goal in this conference that I will share with us a bit that the Lord has taught me 
about preserving the fire of revival within a territory. It is possible that men can capture the realities of God and preserve it transgenerationally. It does not have to be lost with the absence of a generation. Are we blessed already? Now, I, I am sent to the body of Christ, as you would have observed. I make it a point of duty to not criticize the body of Christ. It is not my culture at all to talk about maybe churches or say anything negative. No. I am sent to the body. And one of the requirements to carry a grace that is for the body is you must love the body. If you love God and hate the body, you are still defaulting. You must love God and love his body. Are we together? And I have found out that, respectfully speaking, one of the reasons why many people are very weak spiritually, why many people do not host certain dimensions of God, among many reasons, there is a theology that has been sold, especially this generation. And the theology is that there is no participation and there is no price required to host God. And it looks like a well-meaning theology. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak anything you want it to say. So that, that, that indoctrination that um, God can use anybody he wants to use, it doesn't matter who has created a justification for laxity in the body of Christ. So people do not have the passion to press towards the things of God because it looks like there is no profit in pressing into God. Let me tell you this, people of God. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. If everything were a gift, what then is the reward for obedience? Are we together? Deuteronomy 28, when you read from verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Then it begins to list, it says, Then you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a participatory condition that guarantees certain dimensions of the presence of God. And I think that this, this understanding needs to be restored to the body of Christ. There is a price for spiritual power. There is a price to host God. There is a price to carry an anointing for a generation. There is a real price. It's a non-negotiable price. It's not a price that can be politicized. It's not a price that can be manipulated by emotions. The price is fixed. You either obtain the grace. What God gives is the grace to pay that price. Listen, remember when the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus to negotiate positions for them? Because the way they saw the invincibility of Jesus... And they suspected that one day this man would dethrone Herod and he would become the king of the Jews. And so before that would happen, James and John liars with their mother to buy a comfortable political position for them. Should in case Jesus dethrone Herod, that they would sit at the left and right. And so the mother comes with this request. Dear Jesus, would you grant that after you are done with this Roman people, grant that my sons would sit at your left and right. Jesus never said the space was not vacant. He said, here is the condition. Can you drink? Jesus is talking now, not an angel. Can you drink of my cup? Number one. Number two, can you be baptized? Notice that one walks within you and one walks outside you conditions can you drink of my cup and then can you be baptized with my baptism there is a price for the power of god you don't just tell somebody from a wheelchair stand up because you read it in the bible that they shall lay hands on the sick remember that many people taught us that it's costly to experiment like this in the bible one time jesus went to the mount of transfiguration and the disciples wanted to use the opportunity to cash in on that moment and make a name for themselves. 
and they did not look for a mild case that was manageable they got an epileptic patient and then they gathered the people and they prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened they were embarrassed their egos were stung and when jesus came they said why couldn't we cast this out remember again the sons of skiva they came and gathered someone who was a demoniac and they said in the name of jesus whom paul preaches that's the real jesus you thought he would just show up because his name was called and the demons replied jesus we know paul we know he says who are you where do you stand in the spirit i do not see the scar that represents your passing through the school of the spirit and the bible says those demons beat them and drove them out please hear me you don't just speak and people's lives change because the bible said no no we will continue to mock ourselves and propose spiritual things we do not have the grace to defend if we are unwilling to pay a real solid spiritual price the centurion comes to jesus and is making a request over his daughter and jesus said i respect you you're a noble man i will go with you to your house and the centurion said no i am a man under authority in other words i understand government and the implication of authority you too you are a man under authority i'm under the authority of the government of rome and there is a level of power that i have by reason of that authority i can tell one go and he will go and if he does not go the authority that backs me will come to address that situation and jesus said i have not found such revelation who mentored you who taught you this that our exploits in the kingdom is based on the government we submit to where did you find this revelation there is a lot and i'm saying this respectfully there is a lot of talking in the body of christ there is a lot of proposition of what god can do god can heal god can change your life and then we keep saying amen amen but our frustrations continue to grow because it's like the more we are attending church the more we are getting away from god there is no consolation to the reality of the power of god psalm 63 david began to speak and he said oh god thou art my god he says early will i seek you my soul longs for you my heart pants for you as in a dry and weary land it says to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary let me tell you this our churches and our appeals are under attack if we do not bring the demonstration of the reality of heaven here and now a day will come your child will look at you and say until the day you prove the reality of jesus do not talk to me about church again the generation of our fathers is a generation of loyalty even if they don't believe you they have a covenant of loyalty they will pray for you and leave you in your confusion while they believe you this generation is an arrogant scientific generation they will not believe without results the bible says the greek look for a sign this is the reason why our teenagers today have such an obsession for the things technology and all of this and they detest god you mention anything god they are in church they are browsing they they absolutely you are there crying about an encounter you had for years and they, they cannot relate to this the devil is coming as a bridge between yesterday and tomorrow and if we do not restore the authentic power and the grace of god to our pulpits and the church we will be surprised are we together I don't mean to bring bad memories forgive me if i do but how many of you had the opportunity to watch warehouses that were boggled during this palliative time no invitation no poster there was something in that building that people passionately desired and they were not ashamed to leave their houses and climb roofs what if what is in that house is in your church 
spiritually speaking listen now forgive me i came to do something to you we will apologize after the conference are we together the rate at which we beg people to come to church the rate at which we slap this money on publicity the rate at which we are on our knees pleading is a sign that something is not authentic in what we are communicating jesus is with a woman by the well and then he began to speak to her discerning he was a prophet she began to ask him on the subject of worship and when jesus responded to this woman watch this the bible says this woman went and called back do you know the gospel was designed that if it really impacts you you cannot be silent there were people who Jesus begged and said, don't tell anybody. They were too grateful to be quiet. There is something about the reality of this faith life we propose that is not yet true in our lives. Now, this is not an insult. Believe us, we are challenging ourselves. If it is true that we desire the spirit of revival in this conference, then we have to be serious. The sick come sick and we say Jesus can heal and then we share the grace and while they are on their way going home here comes Satan it's not only Jesus he tempted he will follow everybody and say does this look like that revelation of love the more we read the Bible the more we do not see him in our in our churches I was young and now I am old we say I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread but is that not a lie how many believers beg for bread every day we seem to be at the mercy of situations and circumstances watch this a charm is placed on the ground that charm did not ask me whether i believe in it or not i match it on my way going the charm did not ask whether I have faith or not, and it still affected me. Can you imagine that? I'm giving you an example of the experience of many Christians. A charm is on the ground. The charm did not ask you, do you believe I will hurt you? Uh -uh. It didn't care whether you believed or not. And you matched it, and all of a sudden, something began to happen to you. Oh God, restore your glory and your power back to the church. There are too many things we propose without the grace requirement to defend them and the world used to be quiet but now the world is beginning to ask questions oh dear church they will search for scriptures and say come and defend it you told us that god can restore here is a woman with 23 years of captivity and all her life she's been serving the purposes of god can you prove to us that God restores? And we stand there quoting scripture and saying all kinds of things. And the onlooker who is looking says, this is your Jesus. There is a question mark. Is God challenging someone tonight? There is no continent that prays like Africa. And yet we are the ones in need of results every day. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Are we together? Financially speaking, there are many, many believers who are in situations, they are givers, they love God, they tithe, they sow, they give, and yet in a shocking way they never rise to a notable dimension i'm not talking of just having your needs met that's not prosperity you don't need god for that to happen you just need wisdom not even the wisdom of the word sophia the wisdom that comes by studying the laws of nature i share with you my contemplations and I share with you what began to lead me to seek for God beyond church, to seek for God beyond religion, to seek for God beyond Bible studies and prayer meetings. I knew something was wrong. 
the bible says proverbs 18 and verse 1 to desire a man having separated himself he said seek it and intermeddleth with all wisdom something is wrong i won't take too much of your time but i need to challenge you when we talk about revival did you know for the average person we don't even have an idea of what we're talking about we just feel oh a time when people will just pray for a few minutes and then backslide whenever they feel like doing and then we just know that in 1995 there was such a move of god no sir and yet we say the path of the justice as a shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day let god be true let god be true any good state let god be true my experience is too small to validate who god is if if my experience does not capture all the dimensions of god i cannot create a theology out of my limitation to mean god cannot do it god will not bend to us we are the ones who will bend to say lord i take responsibility there is something about my christian experience that is not capturing the fullness of you are we blessed oh i am a prophet god called me to be a prophet every prophetic word is wrong it didn't come to pass everything you say is wrong your name is john he said no my name is not john but something is wrong look let me tell you this listen i'm not being sarcastic i want to be sincere with you it takes humility and brokenness to admit don't fake what can be real insist and say something is wrong i may not know what is right but oh god come to me the strength of god does not look for strength the strength of god looks for weakness when it finds strength it will go back until there is a broken and a contrite heart having said all this let me announce to you that revival is real having said all this let me announce to you that God is still in the business of making men and shifting territories and continents. Just because that reality may not be captured in your space personally does not mean God stopped working because of you. You may have stopped pressing into God, but he did not stop moving people. There are people who, who did not graduate themselves from that school. They said, Lord, I ever remain a student. And God has continued to advance the frontiers of the kingdom through them. And it is my prayer and my desire tonight that God will cultivate a hunger and a passion greater than ministry title, greater than preaching, greater than conferences, a depth of hunger to host and deliver a dimension of kingdom reality that dumbfounds principalities and powers. While you are seated, can you pray in one minute and say, Lord, plant a dissatisfaction in my heart. Plant a dissatisfaction. I'm tired of Greek and Hebrew words without a grace to demonstrate their validity. Please pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. This is 25 years of the faithfulness of God. There has to be a dimension of substance to our Christian experience. Someone is praying. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Call upon me, he says, and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Pray for one minute. Shela parus kada branda kada balahas kere bala. Lord, we desire to see your power and your glory in Enugu State once again. We desire our altars to be places of fire. 
we desire to see sinners saved with forceful power we desire to see a reign of signs and wonders again we cannot lose this heritage there must be a generation that becomes a continuation of this Please pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen. I went to church and I had my pastors preach from scripture they said many things about god they said god is love i heard them preach scriptures like if you've been evil know how to give good gifts how much more your heavenly father i preach i heard them preach messages like he has been made the head of all principalities but i could not see the substance the validation of that which was said while they were preaching i was watching the sick who sat close to me I was watching families I knew were in trouble. Where is this God we are talking about? And then we say he's in our midst. Let's worship him. And we finish and sit down. And I say, but when God came in the Bible, I know what happened. I read my Bible. The Bible says the mountains keep like lambs when he comes. And yet he's there and we are browsing, pinging on our phones. Is it the God of heaven? Even angels, when they appeared, the impact was too much for men to ignore them. Something is wrong. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give you life. It was while men slept that the enemy came. Something happened to them. Once the prophet Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko to break kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.